this is a pretty familiar site. Boy, is it annoying when you're trying to use them. And it happens on lots of them. I've tried fixing it with silicone and liquid nails and everything else. Nothing seems to work. I've tried this stuff, but it's time consuming and expensive. It works pretty well, but if I'm going to spend that much effort, I'm going to try to do something a little different. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to caning. It's a pretty obscure art form. You can find lots of information on the internet, but I'm going to show you a real easy way to do this. First, let's clean them up and make them new looking. And get rid of the previous adhesives and stuff that I tried that didn't work. Now I want to scratch the metal where the product that I'm going to put on the handles is going to come in contact with, just to be sure that it doesn't slip. Clean them off with mineral spirits, just like you would as if you were preparing any metal surface to be painted. Okay, for this project you're going to need Sculpey. It's an oven baked clay, and it's pretty cheap and pretty easy to find at any craft store. For this I'm going to use Primo because it's a little harder. It's still made by the same people, but it gets a lot harder and that's a little more practical since we're actually using it for a tool. And what we're doing is called caning, but they call it Mil Fiori, so you can look it up. I guess it's Italian for a thousand flowers, which will make sense in a minute. But it's a pretty simple procedure that you can use to make some pretty fantastic results. It's really not as complicated as it looks. And this might seem to be a little over the top for pliers, but it's really not as hard as you think. This is just one of those craft store glass votives that costs about 30 cents. Well, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple cane, and if you want to learn how to make more complicated ones, you can look it up and apply it to other types of projects. But for our purposes, I'm just going to do something really easy. Here's an end view of some of the canes that I've made in the past. For this video, I'm going to be using exclusively black and white because it's the easiest to see on the video. The clay is still soft at this point. So the process works by shaving off a small piece off of the end of the extrusion with a razor blade. And then you can press it onto whatever you want to put it onto. And then you have to bake it in the oven. Start by cutting off two equal, equally sized chunks of contrasting colors like these. Now we want to make two slabs out of the clay. A pasta machine is really helpful because it softens clay by kneading it and it mixes it and it will make a nice flat surface. If you don't have one of these I'm sure you can find a way to make a nice flat slab. I recommend that you buy one of those machines just because it's fun. Stack them up. There we go, easy enough. Now I had it nearly two feet long and I'm cutting it into seven even parts. The reason that I made seven is because I'm going to make a bundle. like this.
now that I have them bundled, I roll. I'm going to make this one really intricate. Why not? I'm going to roll it. I'm going to repeat the exact same procedure. I'm going to roll this out to 21 inches and then cut it into seven even parts again. The pattern becomes intricate quickly. You can see that it has a lot of detail. You probably can't see on the video, but each time you repeat the procedure it makes it more It makes the pattern smaller. But we're going to do the same thing again with the bundle. But this time I'm not going to roll it out because the pattern is already detailed enough. So I'm only going to roll it enough to make it round. The cane itself needs to cool down for a little bit, and then it kind of gets a little bit more firm and then it's a lot easier to cut without damaging the pattern. Now we can see a little bit better what the pattern's going to look like. I like to use a brand new razor blade with that little silver thing that's on the back taken off so that it slides right through. We want to cut slices really thin, not even an eighth inch. and then just apply them wherever you think they look good. I think this acrylic cylinder works a lot better. It, it's really good at smoothing these seams inside this concave portion. If you don't like a portion of your pattern, You can apply something new right over top of it and just kind of smooth it in. It's all just happy little clouds. This is a great way to practice this. Because it's not like it's important. Pliers. Even if you don't do the caning, if you just apply some of this polymer clay to your pliers, this is a good way to make a pretty secure handle. Sorry if I'm not keeping it in the middle of the camera. It's kind of difficult. It's starting to look like snake skin. It just takes patience. You don't have to make it perfectly smooth, because after it comes out of the oven, we can sand it. Okay, there it is. Now I'm just going to pop it into the oven for 15 minutes. Okay, all done. Now, if you really want them to shine like glass, you have to sand them first with 220, and then wet sand afterwards with, well, I'll probably use 320, 400, 600, 800, 1000, and 2000, but that's a little overboard. They turned out pretty nicely. It definitely pays to not skimp when sanding. Go through all the steps, there's no substitute for this finish. There's one last step, and then I'll call it quits. I'm going to try something different this time and dip them into high gloss polyurethane. Usually I use polyacrylic on this type of clay, but I'm going to experiment this time. Here they are through the looking glass. Hopefully you can get a good idea of what the finish looks like now. They turned out really nicely. All finished. Now we have some $5 pliers that have $50 worth of labor invested into them. Yay!